Alright, time for a Mundo game. I will be playing this one against a Zin here, which should be okay, really, matchup wise. Uh, he can't get a knock up on me, obviously, due to my passive. There's nothing else he can do against that, essentially, so that's pretty nice. Early 1v1s. I do have to be a little bit careful, though, because he is obviously a pretty strong early game champion, but. Well, if I land my cleavers correctly, I should do a good amount of damage, too. I think I'll start blue in this instance and see if I can maybe go for like an early advantage towards my set. If I can give set a like a kill lead in that lane, it's chill, really chill for him. Like that should be a very easy snowball. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can do that. Otherwise, we're just going to like look at bot lane, obviously. But uh, as Mundo, my highest priority is just to get my clear tempo done correctly. You want to clear as fast as possible, as efficiently as possible. Get that XP, get that snowball, uh, scaling, sorry. And you want to get to like mid to late game where your champion is immensely strong. But before that point, not that strong. So, you know, you really want to make sure that you uh, play efficiently in your camps. Use your clear speed, use the clear speed that this champion has effectively. And then you'll do well. If you're trying to over gank, trying to uh, do something like that, you're going to start falling behind and that would be bad for you. So that is something you have to be very careful with on Mundo. If you keep that in mind, though, Mundo is one of those champions that will do extremely well for you. Like, this champion will allow you to carry a lot of games, a lot, a lot of games. Uh, but you have to make sure that you path well, that you do that correctly. Otherwise, you are going to be too far behind in a lot of games and you will not be able to afford your items. So that is, that is obviously like a, a situation you have to keep in mind. Make sure that with the small ones, that's the one you hit with your E, so you can go through the camp with it, so you have a bit more of that extra AoE damage. There we go. We're just going to go for a full clear here. Zin is already mid lane. That's actually kind of good for me, because that maybe allows me to level 4 against level 3 invade him on the stop side camps. Which is definitely something I'm now going to look for. Because that is a very good thing to potentially do here. I believe I also just flashed mid, because I saw that on the, on the minimap. So I should be okay here, just to go invade him, basically. I'll keep my smite as well, so I can have the smite ready for the invade. Hit that one E nicely in a line as we drag the camp, and then we're going to send it. Top lane gank is obviously off the table here, but this top lane invade on this Zin is very much on the table. So we are going to look for this. There you are, Zin. Good day, buddy. We're going to insta-ghost. He walks off to that side. That's a little bit unfortunate for me. Oh, that's actually not the best decision, I think. Okay, we're going to loop around this way then. Hit the cleaver. He doesn't think he has flash. He had flash? Okay, I guessed his flash direction. He could have gone either here or here, but I guessed correctly, so we're happy. Yeah, that is... He went for mid gank, and I just get to punish him for that instantly, which was very nice. Got his flash. He didn't flash mid lane then. That must have been his E that I saw. They didn't pay, like, a lot of attention to it, to be fair. Let's take the scuttle here as well. And then we just have to reset quickly. Because right now we have 20 seconds before that spawns. Oh. Itchy nose. Unlucky. Uh, we go for this item here. Perfect. Alright. So now I'm just going to make sure that I get back to this camp as it spawns. Or, well, you know, obviously I got a little bit delayed. But we want to get there as fast as possible. Do another full rotation. And then we'll, we'll see from there. The mid lane gank allowed me to do this, otherwise I probably would not have gone for that invade. But because of that mid lane gank that he did, I had a level advantage over him, and then it's kind of chill. Not too bad. My top laner also rotated, which made my life a little easier, to be fair. Alright, good. There is a bit of a bot lane situation going on, but I'm gonna stick to just what I would recommend. Like, you could technically look to go gank bot there a bit, but... That obviously gonna cost me a lot of clear tempo, and I just want to show you that if you go for the clear tempo, as like just do it correctly, you'll be very well off. That's a huge double kill. Because what I would like to do here, basically, is I'd like to just do this into um, Void Grubs, keep good tempo, and be happy with that. Use my downtime more so. My team is just like winning fights, by the way. That guy's also gonna die. Yeah, barrier, barrier. Oh, that's close. That was real close, actually. All right, my team, like, my, my top laner, like, they just dove my set and they just lost. Like, that's interesting. I don't know, it seemed like a bit of a desperation move from the Zin right there. We'll do this. 27 seconds on this. Uh, I can 
maybe look for the Gromp, but based on him just being top, I don't think it's going to be up. His Wolves, on the other hand, might be. Okay, that's just an overstay from Kai'Sa. It's a bit of a mistake from Zin, actually. He insta-eat that situation, which is not really worth doing. Because if you insta e and the Kai'Sa would have still had would have still had flesh, then Kai'Sa may have actually lived. He should have just walked up to the Kai'Sa and then held his E, and then if Kai'Sa flashes, you can E after because he doesn't have flesh himself. Uh, it's technically smarter, but you know. Okay, it looks like Zin is trying to rotate up to the Void Grubs real quick, so we're gonna prevent that situation. See if Lux walks up. She doesn't. It looks like Zin just ran down then. I'm just going to do Void Gobs myself, obviously, because I want to get these. And then after that, we'll just look for a good recall. We're getting, like, nicely through our early game for this, honestly. Like, this is really chill for me. Just getting those clears in there, make sure my CS is good. That's, like, the big thing I'm focusing on, because that's what your consistency is going to be. If I go for ganks and get kills from ganks right now, that is obviously fine. But it's not the, where the consistency lies, especially with... Mundo, because Mundo has very, very good clear speed that you can use. So, yeah. Okay, pretty spicy. Team's dying a little bit. Okay, at this point, I'm like definitely at the point where I'm like strong enough to just send the gank. I think if they're gonna push my Milio, which I think they will, I'll just go for the play here. Or they this guy starts dragging and I go for that, which also works for me. I think I can definitely fight Dragon here. Like, at this point, I'm strong enough to just send it, so I'm gonna just send it. Please. Like, actually, please. <laughs> this should be so free, by the way. Gonna focus this guy, I guess. Just focus the squishy dude. Got it. Make sure that I focus correctly on getting the smite there. I was very focused on that one. And that's pretty chill. Like, I'm actually in a very strong position. I just have a good advantage there, so we're just gonna send that instantly. His red should be here, so I'm gonna quickly do this red buff as well. After that, I might look for the mid lane play, but I'm definitely gonna take red buff first. Okay, he's just dead. I wanna use this time to punish and take his red, because taking the Zin's red is actually very important. This makes Zin a lot weaker in those fight scenarios. Now, all my camps are gonna be up, so I'm actually just gonna look to clear. I can back for my heart steal right now, but my camps are freshly up right now, so I don't wanna back and waste like 30 seconds doing the recall and then walking back to my camps uh, that they could be respawning instead. So I'm going to use that time. We're also going to look at like Rift Herald here or, or Void Grubs here, sorry. That's one thing I'm definitely looking at two minutes. There's plenty of time to full clear right now and then just recall go Void Grubs and I should be fine. So yeah, we used basically some downtime to contest the dragon, right? And then we're just going to prioritize like taking his red buff and then we're gonna walk back in our jungle and clear everything and we should be able to then kind of play around for the next objective again which is going to be these void grubs uh, but i want to try to recall when my camps are down okay this this that, that dive just solidified my top laner's position completely so that is definitely uh, pretty bad for the enemy team he's in his mid I think I might want to skip my Krugs here, actually. Because this Zin is going for Desperation plays, and I should punish him for this. Like, I really should punish him for this. I'm gonna do this. Uh, he barely saw me, I think. Wait, excuse me, what did I just do? I'm actually very sad with what I, the way I played that. Don't think they get to fight me here. That is interesting. It's gonna ult now. Lux is also dead here. I hope she doesn't have flash. We'll see if she has it. She does have flash. Okay, fair. I think she might live then. No, never mind. She actually didn't live. And he gets the kill. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'm like pretty strong now. And the way Zin's playing currently is very desperate. Like he's going for a lot of plays that realistically should never work. And because he's going for those, he's not really farming as effectively, so my lead expands, and I can go for fights like that, where it's just like, what are you gonna do, you know? Like, Lux is not a champion that would really kill me, so I'm not too fussed about that. Get the smile on this. I would like my brand not to be blind, that'd be great. But I guess it doesn't matter, because I have a three-level advantage on Zen. Even though I don't have a finished item, my three-level advantage is just a colossal advantage, like, what do you do? 
I really want to just get the Void Gobs, man. This is 10 seconds on those. I just want to do him on spawn. I do not care about your top turret whatsoever. Like, right now, Zin's dead, so he's this is not going to be contestable for him. And me just getting the Void Gobs right now is what I kind of want to go for. Now, this is a potential situation where this top laner will just contest me on these. Which would be a little bit unfortunate, but at least get the first one. Okay, we're just going to smite the first one and leave. That's fine. He contests me for it. I have four. My top laner doesn't want to rotate for this, so that's okay. I'm not going to go too greedy because we now know that uh, my top laner just wants to recall. Are you serious? That's like the biggest scam on the planet. Like, what do you mean, Void Gobs? That's just a joke. I still got four, which gives me a spawn marker. So the four and six give you void spawns. The six, obviously, more than the four, but this is good enough for me. I think... We just gone for the Void Gobs together with set that would have been free. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to try to contest that because the tempo on my laners is off for that. It's not going to really work too well. So we're going to go for that. Uh, just calm. Recall. We get one with the smite and leave. So that way we at least get the spawn marker off of it and we're pretty happy. My CS is 100 at 12 minutes, which is really good because it can just pick up from here, essentially. And my goal here is to play for the Dragon in 40 seconds now, so I am actually going to just do the Wolves. And do the Grump, and then see if I can go bot gank into Dragon. Because we definitely want to try to like prioritize objectives as much as possible. Uh, getting these camps done is going to be good as well. I made hit level 10 here. I'm kind of hoping for that. There's the level, perfect. I'm mm, just going to clear the ward here then. Auto attack reset with E. Okay. Not too much I can do there, really. It's kind of fine. Just a good amount of poke towards their bot lane, so now I could just drag in here. Just going to go for Zin. Good cleaver hits. Get the approach velocity proc. Good hit. Perfect. Lux is going to die here as well. Nice. Wait. Why would you flash for that? Okay, we're just going to go engage bot lane right now because that's just free. Uh, not if that is... Tra that trap actually slowed me to the point where I cannot chase that, even if I click ghost. If that wasn't a slow right there, I probably could have gone for it. But we're going to prioritize the objective here. We're just going to be nice and clean, get the objective, and then we'll see if I can maybe invade the Zin's camps. Kind of want to look for the invade. Because if I now pressure my advantage into him and deny him camps, that would be really bad for him. It's going to be very hard for him to fight me. I'm actually going to ghost here. Goodbye. That is, that is just my level advantage at this point. Like, it's impossible for him to fight me. And this is why... Like, he got too desperate going for kills. And he just got punished on repeats, basically. It's pretty spicy. I believe these are up as well. Yep. Oh, that's not good. My pet finished him. Nope. Do I win this? I think I can just focus Jin here and be fine. Yep. That's good advantage. Stay with him. Walk with him here. I don't want to give him the hook, basically. So I'm staying ahead of him there to try not to give him the hook. Because what I was doing there is I was making sure that the hook hitbox actually doesn't allow him to hook the wall or the turret. Staying ahead of him. So he can't get away from me that way. Which is good can't really recall here, can I? I guess I just hit turret then. I'll just get the wave and then I'll recall. My camps are up, so I really want to make sure I get those again. Let's finish these off and then we're going to reset now. I'm going to try to get my camps again and uh, play for the Rift Herald potentially. Perfect. I'm gonna go Warmox here. Beautiful. We're looking for these two as core items. Titanic is like 
I, I tried some games where I, I usually went ended up going hard steel titanic but you know like after trying some games going hard steel uh warmogs it just feels better the clear speed is really not that necessary from titanic or anything like that you can just build it a little bit later but warmogs just feels a lot nicer to use so yeah my team wants to go for rift heralds i could just go for it honestly like for me, just getting my camps right now, I have plenty of time on Herald. I don't think the enemy Zin's really going to do anything about it. So I just wanted to go for the clear here and then just go Herald as my camps are down. Make sure we keep good tempo here. Did he do my red buff? Oh, no, I did hit it. I didn't hear it hit. Okay. Okay, team's dying a little bit. It's not too big of a deal. We we're playing very selfish, very like rel like efficient here for my own CS and stuff. I will do what nicely. Let's go for the top lane. This should be super free. Good day, sir. Is he gonna help me today? That would be nice. You know, that would be appreciated a little bit. Jesus. <laughs> I, I got a little worried there because he was just kind of looking at me and I was like, are we doing this? Like, really? But no, we're chilling. <laughs> we are chilling. Warmox heals us back up the full. We're going to invade this guy. Hopefully there's nothing to take. Uh, we're going to do the aggressive play here and just run through both turrets because we have this potential here. Nothing here, really. I mean, Zin's dead, so there's nothing he can do about this. I'm just going to take camps. This is like, because I have this much priority, I could just do whatever I want, essentially. And we're just going to run through his camps. This will make it impossible for him to play. Actually, I don't have to set the elo of this game. It's a bit late into the video, I guess. I just realized I may have forgotten. This is uh, gold elo, by the way. It's not the highest, obviously, but yeah. la di da <laughs> <laughs> la di da we'll just pull a mundo that's mine thank you <laughs> we're just acting like we're the enemy jungler you know we just run through the turrets like it's nothing as soon as you have this like advantage position wise you should really just like look to go for it what is that herald waste what do you mean that's a bit unfortunate i actually need to hit the turret he just missed the Herald completely. That's a massive waste of a Herald, unfortunately. Very interesting. Chin's pretty strong, to be fair. He does have seven kills. It's a good proc on my heart steal. Hit the Jin. I'll tank the hook for my Brand there. I'll be nice. Like, Brand could have died to that hook. I don't die to that hook, so I'll tank it for him. No worries. That's a flash choice, okay. I think I just... No, we obviously am just going to run down the gin on mid lane, actually. I'll be nice. Like, in that situation, I just tank the hook for Brandit's side. It's all good. Just walk up to the turret and kill it, I think. I wish my ranged champions would have actually just hit the turret earlier. That would have been good, probably. But I'll check his red before I do dragon. Because I believe it's up. It is up. But I'll do dragon afterwards, obviously. I don't want to give him red buff. Like, if I go red straight away, then uh, or dragon straight away, I'll not be able to take the red, really. I mean, I probably can, but, you know, I have 190 CS at 19 minutes. And again, this is... Like, all I'm doing here is just playing, like, efficiently CS-wise for myself and just letting my champion do the work, essentially. Because my champion scales well as long as he gets enough CS, enough gold income, XP, all that. He's obviously going to try to steal it. Let's take the reset here. Mm, actually, in this instance, I can probably just go Titanic next. Usually, I would go for a uh, a tank item here in this position. Like, I would go for, like, Born Mill or Spirit Visage, whether I need more armor or magic resist. But in this game, I'm, like, in a, such a comfortable position that I can opt to just go Titanic and, like, neglect my resistances for one more item. So I just have the extra damage from Titanic, which is what I'm going to do. Gonna finish the last couple of camps to be able to purchase this. Uh, so after this, we need some resistance items. Usually, I'd go for like a resistance items here and like whatever fits best into the enemy team. So 
I'd say Thornmill works the best against their team. I would go Thornmill, then I would look for a Titanic, and then I would look for like maybe a Jock Show, perhaps, or a Spirit Visage, or if I don't really need to survive more with resistances specifically, I can also go for like a pretty aggressive Overlords. Um, at the end, like as my last item option, I will always go Overlords. So I will sell my boots for Overlords. If I went for double resistance or whatever I did, that is what I would always do. Very good. Make sure that you are um, that you know that the, your E is an auto attack reset, but the Titanic Hydra is also an auto attack reset. So you can QE and then Titanic Hydra for three very quick auto attacks. So you auto attack E Hydra. Okay, didn't get it off there. But that is the idea. We have approach velocity. We run this guy down. Damage. I mean, uh, this is like at this point, like this is what you're playing towards, essentially. You're like farming, you're being consistent, you're being like efficient with your CSing, with your pathing, all of it to be able to get to the mid to late game where you have several items and you just delete the enemy team because there's nothing they can do. That is really what you are looking to do. Actually, I think I just go run this guy down. Yep. <laughs> Ah, uh, you love Moon. Like when you once you get into this position as Mundo, it's just so free. Like it's actually just so free. We got this down. We're done. Run mid. We got that down, and we lost it to top turret as well. Got the cleaver approach velocity proc. Very good. Uh, I don't have enough damage there. Final ult. He's gonna hook me on the Nexus. Fountain. Oh, enemy team FFs. Alright, cool. Uh, so yeah, in this game, resistance item here. I probably would go Thornmill, honestly. I think that makes sense. Gives reflect damage. And then I would go Blood Lords in this situation. Sell boots for maybe like a spirit visage at the very end type deal but i could go pretty aggressive in this situation specifically however that was a pretty quick game so i will see you guys in game number two i suppose okay before we move into the second game of this video i quickly wanted to mention that more than half the people who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed so if you are enjoying the content a subscription would be greatly appreciated if you are already subscribed hitting the like button helps out a lot as well with the youtube things and uh, yeah, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy game number two. All right, it's time for a Mundo game. I will be playing this one against a Jarvan here. Uh, this will be the second game of this video as well, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, the first one was relatively fast. I'll show you just how consistent this can be. Just gonna go for that good pathing again. Get those camps down. We're gonna be starting top side here. I think top lane is my most likely or bot lane is my most likely gank scenario i think so uh, i do have nautilus like nautilus is very good setup obviously we do have morgana's um what do you call it morgana's black shield to kind of counter that but a little bit but Jin w also does a lot for ganks like the snare is pretty long right so if he lands that correctly like bot lane gank i have the best setup for top lane gank might be doable uh but yeah just gonna tell a guy that he doesn't have to leash if he wants to that's fine i guess but he doesn't have to because as mundo you don't really gain clear speed from this the reason you don't is because your cleavers do current hp damage so while he does like help me a little bit uh, it doesn't save me that much time because my cleaver damage as he does more damage to the camp goes down as well and that is a, quite a big drop off because of the fact that it's current hp damage so that's something to keep in mind like you lose, easily lose like 100 damage off your cleaver uh, every single time that like in between cooldowns basically so it's not the most useful scenario to uh leash for mundo or to get a leash as mundo it doesn't really do anything we'll take like a second save or something like that that's fine but i'm just saying you know good our pet's gonna be probably inconsistent it's nope he killed it nice good beautiful get this out of here hit this small one put the e uh, w on sorry should be hitting my cleavers. I wasted a couple seconds there. 
Gonna hit this on the red buff. Auto attack that one more time. The red buff cleaver would have done more damage than the raptor cleaver, so we're just throwing it towards the next camp. Jarvan could maybe look to invade me now. This is like the moment he could get me. So that would be... If he does that, that would be really unfortunate, but I doubt he would. I doubt he has, like, has the clear speed to contest with it, essentially. Okay, mid lane with the kill. Big echo flash used. Just gonna try to kill them at about the same time. Line the small ones up and then E everything at once. Perfect, we go bots. Got some decent HP regen. We're gonna try to make a decent loop here. Okay, I'm gonna have to ghost now because that engages a bit early. It's decent damage. That's uh, a little unfortunate. I think Jin could have uh, done something there to get the kill by flashing for that auto attack. I think it was doable, but Nautilus went a little bit too early there, unfortunately, which created a problem because I wanted to make a good loop and just get in a good position from the start instead of just running at it straight away uh, to make flashing away from that play a lot more difficult. But then Nautilus decided that he just wanted to go. So, you know, that's, yeah, not ideal. Jinx flash down at least, I suppose. Should be fine. Uh, in this scenario here, we're going to look to go for the spawn here. Pretty much as efficiently as we can, but we might be able to look for a top gank as like an in-between scenario. It looks doable, really. Is he gonna be doing top scuttle? There's no way. Did he? Does he? Wait, why is the scuttle so far up? That's unfortunate, actually, for me. Should have just like committed to walking up there. I mean, he's obviously there. I can't contest because my Aatrox lost the uh, lost the trade big time. He actually went for like running all the way up there. I actually don't mind this too much because I'm going to just gain tempo. If I walked straight at the scuttle from this side, actually, that would have been better. Because then I would have smited the scuttle and either just would have been bad for him. I, I really don't. I mean, I really don't want to do this. Like, I'm not going to do this. He has teleport. He should just learn to respect it. There's no way Seth dives that either, honestly. The reason I don't want to do this is because I'm going to spend a lot of time towards that. And my Aatrox, is, it's going to be an impossible kill, essentially. Like, we'll never get the kill. It's just going to be, like, me potentially giving him, like, three extra SES. So it's not worth it. Just need to make sure I get my camps cleared and keep my own XP tempo going. I even hesitated, which is already bad. I should never even have hesitated there because that was just not a play. Let's get this out of here. Krug's next. Jarvan started topside, cleared down as well, but then he ran through. Like, I'm basically just have like a good tempo advantage on him here, like clear wise. He's gonna be there. I can, in this scenario, go for his both side camps or reset. I think I'm gonna reset here. I can reset and go for this. He's probably gonna transition through mid towards bolt now. And I just go for. Uh, for Void Grubs, I suppose. I want to go Void Grubs here, and if he's in sticks, like, around Bolt, I can go for maybe his Red Spawn as well. Set Flash down. He's going to be on that. I'm going to go for Void Grubs, though. Like, I'm definitely going to take the objective right here. Even if they stall Jarvan a little bit, this is pretty good, because I get Void Grubs, Top Scuttle, Red Buff, most likely, and that would not be too good for Jarvan. He's actually going to lose quite a bit of that. His Krugs could be up to. That'll be a definite could because I don't think so, but, you know. Oh, please don't die to that gank. That would be so criminal. That is actually would be the, the saddest thing right now if he had died to that Jarvan situation. Oh, that small one just blocked my cleaver. They actually died to the Jarvan gank. Hmm. That's really favorable for Jarvan. I'm not going to lie. I'll do this. I'll do his red buff. He's most likely going to go for Dragon. Kind of sad by the fact that they died to the Jarvan being on Permavision. But yeah, what am I going to do about it, I guess, you know? Go for his red buff here. I'm going to basically try to take his camps now. His red's very, like important. I can do his Krugs as well, perhaps. But like red is just very valuable here. Red on Jarvan makes him a lot stronger for fights as well, so I don't want that. Take this for free. No wave there currently, so we're gonna just walk past here, take his Krugs, and then I guess I'll go top gank. No. 
I need to finish the camp first here because I don't want to give this. But I will go for the top play. And then after the top play, I just full clear. All he has to do is just not int. Just do not int. I'm actually gonna ghost. Please do not int. I beg, just don't int. Thank you. <laughs> like, I like if he was full. I, I don't care if he gets the kill. That's not really a worry about about that. But if he has some type of way to kill the Aatrox, it would just be so not worth it. Like, all he has to do is not int, and he can just shove his next wave for free, and he's just gonna be better off that way. You know, just take the assist and be happy. It's all he had to do. I do see a lot of people greet for those situations, though, so that's why I was worried about it. Like, greeting for that would just not be worth. I ghosted, not really because it was necessary, but more so because I anticipated Aatrox to in, so I wanted to get there a little bit faster. So, yeah, it's not a great ghost, but I was I was just worried. Right here, I could just take my entire bot side now, and my tempo advantage here is going to just keep going and right now. It's just going to be bad for Jarvan, basically. Because that this is the moment where like I got to take his camps and I get to create a big, big CS lead for myself. And that CS lead is like the first game, that's how I can hammer the, the guy down in a second. So this is gonna be uh, pretty painful for him in a, in a little bit. I also get my item on the next back. I do want to make sure I get those void gobs. I'm not really looking to dive bot lane, that situation isn't particularly good, but I do have to react to this. Potentially just show myself, I think. I'm just going to show myself here. Good, like, aggressively clear the ward or something. Good, hit the ward. Me just showing myself there is all I really need to do here, because now Jarvan has to respect me. They're going for this. Okay. That's fine, I guess. I don't think I'm too worried about this. I'm get that kill. I don't think she kills me. Because my ult healing. But I also can't kill her because she is a ranged champion, so you know. Okay. I actually re I'm just gonna recall because we have 50 seconds on this. I can just get my back in and it's fine. Yeah, she's a bit of a ranged champion there, so it was a bit too much. I had a lot of gold in my inventory there as well. If I had my items or my gold spent, I guess I could have killed her pretty easily, but I didn't, so... You know, it's fine. It's gonna go here, go to top scuttle, do the void grubs in 30 seconds. This guy get resets, like it should be free. I have a 30 CS lead on Jarvan here as well, which is huge. Two levels higher, almost three. That's the situation we want to be in. Spend my time doing this, and then the Void Gods will spawn in about 18 seconds. I might look for his Raptor camp here. Could maybe do that. Level 9, good. Okay, we go here. Because we see Jarvan mid. Okay, I think I don't chase that. I just do his Raptor camp. Oh, my team engages regard. Okay. I wasn't. I, they were just like kind of out, and then. Sure. Whatever you want, mate. I honestly didn't expect them to commit to that. I was like, okay, sure, that's just a, dis just a disengage. It's fine. I just take his raptors right there, and if he rotates to his raptors, I could just get it for free. And then, yeah, I just wanted to look for void gobs as well. I guess it is what it is. Maybe just shouldn't have pinged in the first place, I guess. They anticipated me to go for that, but I just anticipated that to be in disengage. Not too worried about it, to be fair. Made a mistake. I suppose it is what it is. I mean, whether that's my mistake or just their mistake at that point, I don't know. Either way, I wasn't going to go for that. My team went for it and they died. I did clean it up though, at least. Got my camps again. Everything respawns. Keep that tempo going. I do want to look for the dragon here as well. Alright, beautiful. Almost at my smite upgrade. I have to go mid now. Dude, why am I stuck there? What do you mean? That's That looks so weird. Well, that's actually a pretty good juke. Oh, he danced the hook nice. That's a good hook land. I like it. 
I needed to land that other cleaver, but I didn't, so you know. Oh, he has Echo Ult now. I'm just gonna wait. He does that, I don't really care. I'd son of. Like, where is my Nautilus even at? Okay, there he is, finally. Did he just. I, I didn't see him walk away, that's my bad. I thought that was just, like, gonna be free. He, like, Echo Ult and I'm just chilling, but. Yeah, I, I guess he just. I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's fine. I don't. I'm never, I was never gonna die there. I was just, like, kind of anticipating him to be there but maybe he wanted payback for me doing that earlier or something that's fine that's okay i'll just get dragon here take a reset and uh maybe rift herald topside camps that type of stuff beautiful warmox again can't afford the entire thing now obviously but why the components Solid. Uh, blue gives me my level 11 and my smite upgrades. So I'll be three levels up on the guy, double CS. Again, 117 CS at 13 minutes is solid. A little bit lower than it maybe could be, but that's okay. We're going to definitely do blue first to hit the level 11 level up. And then we're going to contest him on like scuttle probably. I don't know if I want to smite this. I might actually need that clear speed. Okay, I don't. We're good. Good day, sir. Fight me, please. Thank you. Just gonna take this. He flashed out, kept me in the box. That's fine. I'm not gonna do Rift Herald here, obviously, because I just have no lane prior. Like, Katarina went bot lane. Echo is gonna have advantage. Set had advantage. Now, I'm quite strong, but I don't have my ult available to me, so I do have to respect him a little bit right now. We're not gonna be too fussed about it. Herald will be there in the long run. I'm just gonna clear, and it should be fine. Bot side camps are up. I don't think Jarvan really does Rift Herald here, honestly, so I'm not too worried about it. We can just take three bolt side camps, recall, get our War Morgs, and then do Rift Herald. It should be fine. Should be more than okay. Keeping our XP and income, gold income high. Play very selfish as Mundo. This is just like, you will, that will pay off in the long run, essentially. It'll pay off big time in the long run. Might want to just go double kill bot lane here. I definitely look for that. I definitely need to help my Jin here. Two procs, very solid. Jin did die because I couldn't be there fast enough. It just was a little bit too slow. We're definitely going to go for the turret here. What is this? That doesn't do anything. Okay. I'll take my free uh, proc. Thank you. I actually get the heal here as well. Oh, still not turret aggro for my minions there, really. I think I just hit turret here, right? I have ult, so I just focus the turret down, then I just ult, and he just dies, right? <laughs> oh, man. Mundo is such a champion. Like, as soon as you get the lead on this champion, it's just a champion, you know? Like, what do you do against this? Very good. Focus the turret first so I don't have to deal with, like, perma turret aggro, because that's the way he would kill me in a 1v1. If he just hits me in return, that's fine, I guess. Got Warmox here. I would say I'm in a pretty comfortable position this game again, so we're going to go for the Titanic Hydra next. Um, if I was, like, a little bit more of an interesting situation, like, let's say Echo had, like, 12 kills. Let's just say that was the case. I probably would have gone Spirit Visits first. To get a magic resist item against the Echo. Spirit visits on Mundo obviously taking a bit of priority because like the heal increase and stuff on this champ is huge. But I most likely would have done that to deal with like a strong champion on their side. But I don't have too many champs I'm really worried about at the moment. So I'm just going to chill. And I'm just going to go for uh, damage. Like Hydra is just damage. It's still tankiness to be fair. But it's mostly just damage. Why would you... That is so... That's honestly... The reason that's bad is because um, it now gives no versatility to the Rift Herald. Like, that's why it's bad. Because now it's always going to be with Aatrox. If he, especially if he uses it on this turret. But they can always anticipate Aatrox is going to be splitting bot, for example. And then that's where the Rift Herald's going to be. So it's always bad to take the Rift Herald from your jungler. Because your jungler can just put it anywhere. Which the enemy team is just going to have to respect at that point. And that is a lot more difficult to deal with the proper Rift Herald use than... Having the Rift Elf just stuck in the side lane. 
with a champion that isn't even that strong because he's literally one in three. Uh, so he's just going to be killed fairly easily in any given split through situation. So, so stuff like this is very, very bad. Like very bad. But maybe he gets a good Rift Herald use. Who knows? We'll see. I guess I'm not too fussed about it. I'll just do my, buy my own thing this game. I'm dead, perfect. Oh, Nautilus just auto attacks her at the end. Okay, fine. It's a good hit. Nice. Got the assist from the cleaver. 14 seconds on Dragon. I do want this, but I see the red buff spawning right now. So I'm quickly going to take the red buff and greet a little bit for this. And that Rift Herald's getting no use. Like, he's losing one who runs against Set, is he? Uh, okay, he might win that one, actually. I'll take it back. I think he has a chance to win that one. I think Sat still can win that though. Let's get this turret here and then I'll go for Dragon. Okay, no, he loses. <laughs> That's why, like, the Rift Herald's never getting a use. If I had the Rift Herald here, I could have pushed this base turret down. That's uh, not great. Oh yeah, ping is the issue, of course. Now we go Dragon here. And we make sure we keep on top of these objectives as much as possible. We are almost level 14 here as well, which is huge. I do actually just want to recall right now because I have my Titanic and it's a bit, a bit of a big damage upgrade. Do this, buy a cloth armor for now. Perfect. We are incredibly strong here. I'll get the blue, hit me level 14, and then I'll just probably run it into their team, honestly. They do have heal cut on Jinx, so I do have to keep that in mind actually. A bit of heal cut right there. The last items here that I'm going to look for is just going to be survivability, so tank items. She just got kind of deleted. Okay, I think that's fine. I think that's what I go for now. Just one shot on there. She can't bind me, so I'm actually completely chill here. I can just run her down. Like, they have no way of CCing me there if they only have, like, one skill shot that CCs me, so it's pretty impossible. Is he going to use the Rift Herald on mid lane now? Oh, he did. Okay. I guess he gets a use out of it. You can use it then, buddy. Go for it. Uh, I'm not really too interested in getting that mid uh, inhibitor down, to be honest. I, I'm more interested right now in just taking all of Jarvan's camps. Because if I can deny him all of his CS, that's going to be worse and worse for him. It becomes literally unplayable. So me denying him camps right now is just honestly worth more. And inhibitor perma shelves mid, which does give them a chance at like having the... Free farm for a little bit, potentially. I need to go react to this fight, though. Go for the Jinx. Okay, this is just a bit too optimistic. I don't think I want to do this. I could... Maybe... Okay, this looks free now, actually. Gonna ult. That's not going to do anything against me because I still have my passive for now. Hit the Cleaver. And hit the Titanic Hydra hit. See if I can help this guy as well. Hit the cleaver for the approach velocity. Hit the proc. Hit another cleaver, hopefully. Yep, perfect. All right. Unofficial quadra kill. I mean, <laughs> what do you do against Mundo, right? Like, it's just, like, there's nothing they can really do to stop me either. Because Morgana isn't going to stop me alongside Jinx. This is not going to work. She only has, like, an ult or a Q. And my passive blocks the other one. So she'd have to land, like, both as well. Clear this, clear the rest of my bot side here. We did get mid and hip, which is good. I also took three of his Jarvan's camps, so... I have 10 CS a minute, essentially. Take my recall here. Uh, the most effective item against that team is probably just Thorn Mill. So we'll go for that here. And uh, we'll go for a Ruby Crystal right now. I mean, like, yeah, I'm basically just gonna go Blood, blood Mill at the end here for damage. Because I don't need an extra resistance item, I don't think. I could just go Blood Mill for pure damage. So I'm probably going to go Thorn Mill, Blood Mill here. And then I could sell boots for like magic resist when I need it at that stage. I think at that, against that team, I can definitely go for a Force of Nature and be fine with it. Or just Spirit Visage. Ah, Spirit Visage is probably a bit better here, actually. Probably just a little bit better. We're just going to run this down. A machine gun him down. Get the smite, get the approach velocity hit, and then finish him. Perfect. 
I'm, I'm basically just making sure that I extend my approach velocity as long as possible. There we go. And I guess I'll just Baron. I, I could technically push for double turrets here, but their wave clear potential is actually decent. Um, and defending double turrets is pretty easy, so I'm just going to go Baron. But yeah, in these situations, I'm really looking to ex like slow them and extend the hits on the... Uh, on the approach velocity time, so I have the movement speed towards the enemy team. Okay, I I would like to thank this for you, but like I pretty think I'm pretty sure you should thank this now because no one on my team is helping with Baron, so I need to do full DPS to the Baron. So I'm gonna let Nautilus tank it here, because whoever tanks it gets their damage cut in half, and at this point that cannot be me because otherwise we're not doing Baron at all, since my team refuses. So you know, let's run him down. Okay. 28 seconds on Dragon. Uh, that red buff is actually up, I think. Right? Yes. Let me take this red buff real quick. Yeah, I need to let Nautilus tank the Baron there, otherwise I'm not going to get it. Okay, this kind of sucks, actually. I don't have... Some... Where are you... Where is... Where is he going? I just run this guy down, right? Machine gun him down. Hit the cleaver. I do not reach this guy, I think, but we'll try... I could try. I'll ult, actually. It's fine. Yoink. <laughs> la di da Hey, the Jarvan. Good day, sir. That's a bit annoying, actually. I can't reach him here. All right. He wasn't enough, so I Titanic Hydra Pork then. Sorry, buddy. Couldn't reach you on that one. Cleaver, get me that, get me that pork real quick. Thank you. I, I'm not going to stick around here. I should just realistically recall and just go dra Dragon. Because I can afford my Blood Mill here, which is just a massive damage upgrade. The enemy team can hold me okay, I think. Because my ult's on cooldown, I don't want to risk it too much. I'm just going to go this and be fine. I think Katarina dies there for sure. Oh, good Jinx Rocket. All right, beautiful. I got my Blood Mill now, so I have 6.7k HP, essentially. That's pretty juicy. One more proc for a thousand, a thousand stack mark there as well. We're going to make sure we get the dragon here. Uh, Mundo, is, Mundo is a very fun champion to play, honestly. Like, mid to late game, this champion is so fun. Like, there is just nothing you can do against it. They have no tank killing things either. Like, no Blade of the Rune King or something like that. So it's, it's really hard for them to deal with this. Let's push the wave. Just going to go for the turret. I'm just gonna start hitting the turret as well. Like, what can it do against me? Look at my attack. Like, just throughout a fight, just gonna look at the attack damage. It's absolutely ridiculous. I'd like them to maybe consider hitting the turrets, but... Okay. It's a goodie. That's instantly, like, so much damage. Just saw an opportunity for it. Pick my passive up for a heal. And then we just finish the turret with auto attack E. And then we just run at them. I think this is where I can just build now and be okay, right? That's one down, two down, big hit there, big hit here. There we go. <laughs> they did not stand a single chance in that fight. That's hilarious. All right, I have 1,344 max HP gain from Heartsteel. That's huge. My attack damage must have went up in that fight massively from Blood Mill as well. All right, there you go. That is it for Mundo. I hope you guys have enjoyed both of these games. If you did, make sure the like button below. I'll spend quite a bit. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the endgame stats. All right, so for the endgame stats for game number one here, I ended up doing 31.6k damage, which is like triple the rest of my team. Uh, just a very solid carry scenario, really. Not bad. Uh, we have true damage at 1600, objective damage at 32k. Uh, we have healing done 33.7. Damage taken at 48.4. Very good. Self-mitigated at another 28.7. This is just straight 1v9 carry, to be honest. Uh, looking at that damage and stuff. Gold earned 13.5k. Uh, for the runes, press the attack dealt 2200 damage, which is very, very good damage. Very nice. Triumph for 3000 HP, extra gold. Haste for the ability haste. Last stand for the extra damage in closer fights. Amundo does well on like low HP fights, uh, just in general. And last stand amplifies that, which is good. And a magical footwear and approach velocity. Uh, Build-wise here, I 
went for hard steel into warmorks and then because i had like a good significant advantage i can go titanic uh, otherwise i might have to build like a resistance item first into their strongest enemy champion like let's say enemy adc has like 13 kills you have to build a tank item against them and then you can go titanic afterwards uh, instead like if the enemy team is very very scary you might have to go tank item tank item titanic could be the case and then sell boots for blood mill um, but yeah that's kind of the way you want to look at that then for the second game here and this is also a good one v9 honestly uh, we have 43.2k damage which is very good uh, we have true damage at 1600 uh, objective damage at 75.4k which is immense that's very strong healing done 40k uh, damage taken at 58.6 self-mitigated another 40k here as well gold earned at 19.3k that's huge money uh, for the runes, uh, press the attack dealt 2300 damage, which is again solid. A triumph for 6000 HP, extra gold, haste for the ability haste. Last time for the extra damage and close for fights and a magical footwear approach velocity. This build obviously got a bit further than the first one. Uh, in this game, we could go Titanic after the Warmogs because we had a very good advantage. And then we just look at a resistance item, would, which would be best against like generally the enemy team, which is Thorn Mill here. And then since we were just doing really well, we could just go Blood Mill here. Um, usually I sell my boots for blood mill in the setup. You can easily do that because you will have enough movement speed to compensate with approach velocity, red smite, ghost, uh, at all of those types of things and a bit of movement speed from warmogs as well. It compensates enough to sell your boots for blood, lords, uh, blood mill at the very end usually. So this is more often than not just like a spirit visage or just like another tank item in this scenario uh, to go for that build. And in this case, I probably would have just sold my swiftness boots at the end for a spirit visage in this game specifically. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the way you want to build, the way you want to look at it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I upload daily, so be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Bye.